Oh, my beard is itchy. sideburns and hella uh, um, you know neck beards but no cheeks no nothing cheeks nothing hey mm-hmm. yeah i think nick could i think it's like he said i could probably try for a year he said and nothing will happen <laughs> which is really funny i think he let it go the one time and you couldn't tell if it was like an actual beard or just like he just shaved it down to a five <laughs> o'clock shadow well, fuck i hope i don't get cursed with those Cadell's jeans yeah, those are the ones that you don't want as much. Mind you, right now, with how itchy my beard is, I am not a fan of it. So, what are you going to do? Uh, welcome, everybody, to another episode of the F Word Podcast, episode 97. Three episodes left mm-hmm. on our run until we hit our hiatus. Originally, Jesse was supposed to join us, but Jesse ended up having to work super late. Yes, but, but he will be uh, with us next week, God willing. Yes, God willing, he will be. Uh, he said he has that day off when we're going to record, so that will be fun to have him on, and we'll have four people. We've never actually had an mm-hmm. episode with four people. I am your host, G, and with me is just Anthony. Yes, just us. no just the two of us. No Vass, he's off doing volunteer work. Not because he has to, like he got arrested or something, but because he wants to. So there's like a massive bake sale. Yeah, there's a massive bake sale going on with our Greek community. And so he's one of the organizers of it. So um, if you're in the Regina area, I think you can go on Facebook and you could probably find Greek bake sale and then get yourself some Greek treats. Mm -hmm. I'm not one for Greek treats. I'm not a big fan of our culture's desserts. They're too sweet for me. It depends. Like I can't. This goes for all sweets. It's not just, you know, like in just Greek in particular, but I have to be in the right mood. To, like, especially cake. Cake is one that as I like kind of grew up and matured more, I like just did not enjoy eating cake. It was just always too sweet, always too sugary. I'd be mm-hmm. in the right mindset and mood to actually like it. It wasn't until I was in culinary school and I had an actual cake from my instructor who um, he had like just signed on board. He was, I had two baking instructors. One was from, oh, what just happened there? Is it still recording? Yeah, yeah because this is where two minutes 55. Button. Yeah, yeah, okay. I just looked and I forgot to press the 48 volt on my thing, so it might sound weird in the beginning. But anyways, um, my one instructor was from New York, and he was a baker in New York, and the other one was from France, and I had cakes from both of them. Both were awesome. And I was like, oh, this is what a proper cake should taste like without like a lot of sugar and i'm not saying that my mom can't make a cake but she makes greek desserts and greek desserts and cakes just are really syrupy yeah that's the right word for it and yeah and so they're really sweet and yeah for me it's not like i'm one of those greek people that don't doesn't really care for baklava or some of the other stuff like i don't know i'm, I'm very weird for some reason like that i used to hate baklava but like I've always had a weird thing with nuts. Like there are some nuts mm. I can eat and some that actually give me somewhat of an allergic reaction to. Uh, I think pistachios are ones that I actually like my throat starts itching up and I have to just oh, puke no. it out. Yeah. Those are my favorite. I do not care for them. I like do not care. I don't like peanut butter. So I, I, it's not going to really affect me. I don't like a lot of food with nuts in it, but baklava mm-hmm. is one that I enjoy. My mom makes a pretty good baklava and it's like super sweet, but it's also, just some days it's nice to just chill out and have a good slice of dessert. Yeah. I've never, I've never gone out of my way to have one, but I know every year when we've had our big Greek festival, like I'll end up having one mostly because there's nothing really else to eat. And I haven't eaten anything all day. Cause we've all been running around, but like it'll be there and I'll grab one and I'll actually enjoy it. It's like my Terry's chocolate orange. Like I'll have <laughs> yeah. one Terry's chocolate orange the um, around the first week of december that's it i don't need another one i don't want another one i'm good with that one i don't know why it's a thing but it's the same thing with with baklava once a year at that festival well i know I like was, was 
uh, when I started losing weight or just trying to cut down, I was never like a fat kid, but I was like a chunky kid. So in grade nine or 10, when I started working out more, like I was just having a horrible diet where I'd work out, you know, every single day, but I, you know, eat a Burger King every single day. So just be counter countering each other, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So then like grade 11 is when I started getting serious and just basically eating clean, not drinking any soda. That's kind of when my sweet tooth went down and I just kind of like, even to this day, I still just drink water, you know, religiously and barely, I don't remember the last time I had a soda. And that's kind of when my sweet tooth just stopped. Okay, yeah. I mean, when you, I, I've cut sugar out of my coffee, mm -hmm. and I used to be a, like a double double type of person, and now it's just like a, I, I either have it black or it's with a splash of cream. So I've cut out sugar, and for the last few years, I was doing um, uh, raw sugar. Like I think about I've been off sugar for about a year. The year prior to that, it was the raw sugar that I was using. And okay. now, every once in a while, but only if I order pizza, like takeout, like Western or something, I yeah. will have a Coke. Other than that, it's very rare you'll find me with anything, really. And if it is anything, it's like a Coke or a Pepsi, and it's one. I just can't. I can't do it. I, I just don't. I don't crave it like I used to. I think for me, the like one of the only times I'll drink soda, or on the regular, is when I go to a movie. Like, that's kind of the go-to like i go there and you know at my movie theater we have american size drinks so the medium is a regular large and the large is like a fucking big ass thing of soda yeah so that's kind of where i'll like okay let me just do this i'm at a movie i'm you know watching the next type marvel movie let's just go into it and enjoy the full experience yeah i don't know i think uh i'm enjoying the fact that i'm eating a little bit healthier like for lunches these days it's like before I used to, I don't know, maybe have some chips or nothing at all. And now I'm like on this fruit and yogurt and then I'll take my vitamin D pills and then, you know, I'm good to go. It's, it's nice. It doesn't weigh me down as much. I'll have like an orange and then a banana, maybe a hard boiled egg or something. I know during kind quarantine, of happened, so. my whole diet's kind of gone stupid because mm -hmm. I wake up uh, a bit later than, you know, usual, like. I'll wake up at, say, like, 9.30 or 10, and then I'll just kind of chill in my room until I need to actually do something. And then, like, usually I'll have math. Right. I uh, just finished my math class, though. Like, we have a final Monday, but no more classes. So usually, like, even today, like, I just had a bagel right before we recorded just because I was feeling, like, really shitty. And that's all I've actually eaten today. So I think I'm, like, eating once a day now just because I'm not actually doing anything, like, not any physical activity in the sense mm -hmm. where it's, like, my body needs food, and I'm just kind of eating when I, I don't know, like, I'm not starving myself, but it's also, I just don't know, in that weird, like, kind of trance where I don't need to eat, or I don't have a, you know, set schedule where I go to school from X to X, and then I eat after school, and then I go back to the school. Like, I just don't have anything in my day that's kind of, like, built around eating, so I just don't really, it's just kind of slipped out of mind. It's really easy to fall into that. See, when I was living in Calgary and going to culinary school, and me and my roommate were, like, broke. And I was pretty much broke for three years. And luckily, it was culinary school, so I was able to eat at school. Yeah. As part of it is tasting, and you're, you're eating what you taste and eating what you make. And then when I got out and I was working, same kind of deal. We didn't have money, but at least we were able to eat that, like the equivalent of about one meal. So it's that grazing thing. But then I got used to being able to go an entire day with just having like little bits of something. And that carried over for like six years. I think it wasn't until about a year ago or maybe two years ago where I actually started, you know, doing an intermittent fast and eating more and everything. But I got super used to that way of eating. It was pretty – when I look back, I'm like, damn, that was not healthy at all because I, oh, it wasn't it even enough like, food. I feel like shit. Like I just like – I know yeah, I, I feel bad some, and I know exactly what it is. Like, I just need to eat food, but I'm not hungry, which is the stupid thing because I used to be able to eat – just like back in grade 12, I was, I'd eat all the time. Like I'd eat supper and an hour would pass and I'd be like ready to devour a whole nother fucking feast. But now it's like, I can just go, mm, you know, like I'm, I'm intermittent fasting without actually, you know, working out or being in that mindset where I want to intermediate fast. Yeah. It's, um, it's strange how it's strange how the body can adapt to like a new way of, of eating or a new schedule. And then also, but there's also consequences to how you do it, both positive and negative. It's cool. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's pretty interesting. 
And now you have to be careful because the older you get, which I'm starting to find now, which a lot of older people have found now, your metabolism it doesn't isn't as fast. And so when you do eat something not very good, you feel it for like, it's like a hangover. Like my hangovers last three or four days. And if I eat a bag of chips or something, if me and Soph have popcorn, I feel it for like a day and a half to two days after. And then like nothing fits. And yeah, I've got to try to do something about it. But uh, but yeah, that's life. Them's the breaks. Um Speaking of that is life, unfortunately, Lord of the Rings star Ian Holm died. He is the actor who played Bilbo Baggins in the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit films. Uh, he died at 88, which okay. is, uh, he always looked young. Oh, that's not like, bad, though. I'm looking at his photo right now, and the guy looked like he's been 60. 88 is great. Fuck, if you can, I think the average is still around 75. Um, mm-hmm. So that was, that was pretty sad news to, to wake up to. I'm in a time in a year where everything is pretty much sad and then okay so we have jesse's question from last week which we'll get to which is essentially a show that everybody likes that we don't like or movie correct Mm -hmm. that's the one okay i was kind of uh branching Um, it out to also just like any form of media that people really like that you don't like so like right i have a couple like i have a show and a movie but there's also some games that are super popular that i just don't give a shit about that i'll probably Mm -hmm. just throw there there too okay well before we get to that i'm really curious about all this ps5 pricing news because it seems to be like every day there's something different and recently because last week we covered the ps5 and we won't go too in depth of it right now but I sent that one thing where one of a former Xbox exec said that there's no way that the PS5 would be more than 500 bucks. And his so. tweet was, I believe it. This is Albert Pinello. He said, I believe in saying never say never, but I got to say never. No way this console is over 499. And then he had another tweet price in this generation, maybe the most important indicator of success, maybe even more than exclusives. There have never been a more divergent set of specs, features, and price points than I think we're going to see this gen. It will be fascinating. Someone should write a book. Or there has never been a more divergent. Yeah, never has been a more divergent. Then, on Amazon in France, I think, it It was the UK, I believe. If we're talking about the 500 uh, British British pounds. uh, Not the pounds one. There was another one where they said that it was in euros. Which ends up converting to like six hundred and seventy two dollars for us here. Which makes I sense. It was, like if it was gonna be four ninety nine US, it'd be roughly six hundred here, so see no, because traditionally the way I remember it, it's if it's three ninety nine in the US, it's four ninety nine here. It's almost a, it's been a hundred dollar difference. So Not I'm expecting with the conversion right now. I just did four ninety nine to CAD and it's six seventy eight Canadian from four ninety nine. Shit. Yeah, our money's really shitty right now. Well, I've noticed that because um, when I've been trying to order stuff with cigars, I think I mentioned this, it's so expensive. It's like the cigar will cost or the pack will be like 30 bucks, and then it's another 20 bucks just to ship it over plus conversion. And I'm like, well, that's just terrible. I spent, I bought some inserts for my Zippo lighters because you're technically, or most people say don't use a Zippo to light your cigars. So I bought butane ones. And it's cool because my, my Zippos have torch lighters in them. But it was like 60 bucks. From like oh, starting price of like twenty five or twenty dollars or something, so when you add the conversion and the shipping, it ended up being close to sixty. I was like, I'm an idiot for spending this much money on something like that. But fuck, it really gets you. Well, I've I just looked like those Zippo lighters. though, just in general, like they're pricier lighters. But I know they're like they're actually better lighters and they have a longer last or longer shelf life. And lots of people actually use them as collectibles, like. There was oh, a yeah, Red Dead 2 one that I'm looking at right now. They have had mm-hmm. that in their collector's edition, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it makes sense for the bit of price here. But yeah, 60 bucks for a lighter in Canada, that's fucking a bit steep. Well, and, this, and this is just for the inserts. Like, there was two inserts. So you take the inside out, and you can replace it because you have to fill it and change okay, it. Yeah. And those ones are the regular ones with lighter fluid. Um, I'm talking about an actual, just the insert in, uh, itself to have a torch light instead of a soft flame. And even yeah. that, again, the conversion on something like that was so high. And that's probably why today, when I went to go pick up The Last of Us 2, it was like $88. I was like, what the fuck? And then Ethan was telling me that it only cost, it was like $10 less for him on Amazon. Yeah, well, I've heard he about... the he has to like, wait so till Sunday. Not, uh, you know, because Jesse's likely listening to this. And he's actually, you know, talked about this too. 
lots of sites do are cheaper than EB Games. And of course, for me, EB Games is, you know, around my fucking corner. So I'm not going to. And also, I've been talking to those guys for years and years. So I'm mm-hmm. not going to, you know, just hightail them. But places like Walmart uh, occasionally do, like, sell games that are, say, 90 bucks at EB Games for, like, 79 So it's like lots of companies do discount for, like, 10 bucks when they do come out just so they can get a better price. Because I'm pretty sure. It's not a set price as when they come in. Well, and if the PS5 ends up being that seven hundred dollars, which that's where I, I'm thinking it's going to be seven to seven fifty for us. Like I don't <laughs> like despite the other prices in Canada, I can see it being seven hundred or seven hundred and fifty bucks. That's where my mind is going. But then, like the games are going to be what another like are they going to be a hundred dollars a piece going forward? And they just announced Crash Bandicoot Four, by the way, for all you Crash fans. I just saw that, but. uh you know, are all or most of the games going to be a hundred dollars on the PS Five? Because they've got to find a way to mitigate that. That's way too much. Well, that's a thing because say if you buy twelve games a year, that's like one game a month. That's twelve hundred dollars you spent on a games. For me, mm-hmm. I rarely buy games now, so you know, spending a hundred dollars on a game I really want isn't that big of a deal. But also, if I could pay less, like even now, ninety dollars for a game is fucking stupid. Like I remember That's so when crazy. they were sixty dollars back when MW three was released, and people were bitching about that price because I think it was like forty dollars like earlier in the two thousands. And then two thousand ten oh, yeah. was when it started just continuously going up and up and up. Yeah, they're they're definitely gonna have to find a way to to fix that. Now I know that that whatever tariffs are in place, and also whatever the exchange rate that all that doesn't help at all because the companies in the states let's say that make them still have to ship them over here i'm guessing if we had a game that was made in canada like ubisoft for instance in montreal right montreal mm-hmm. toronto like it's a canadian company right it or is but i don't think it matters because their... i was See, curious about that point. too but it seems like even if it is in canada like it's still we still get like screwed out of it because assassin's creed games from my understanding are still you know, They're so pricey. Games. Yeah. 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 Either way, though, I mean, I'm excited to play Last of Us 2. And even though I saw the steep price, it's super easy to be like, oh, okay, well, it's 20 bucks and oh, whatever. I'll just get the game because I really want it. And it's all loaded up and ready for me to play. But um, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting if the console ends up being that much. And let's say that you're upgrading for a TV, which I am going to be upgrading to a TV, like a better TV. And you're spending X amount because there was probably at least five games from that showcase alone that I'm I want to get, <laughs> and so that's five hundred dollars potentially if they're going to be hundred dollar games. Even if they're ninety dollar games, you're not that far off. So you might as well yeah. just round it up and call it a day. And then now I'm just like, okay, well I've always gotten my games from an EB. Um, but I've never, and I've never gotten it from Amazon. I've only gotten it once from the PlayStation store and it ended up like being a disaster. Like it didn't work. It wouldn't, it was a uh, Marvel Lego or Lego Marvel or whatever. Oh, okay, yeah. And then I ended up having to call PlayStation and getting it removed and refunded and all that stuff. And so I was like, well, I don't like this at all. trouble for Marvel like, Lego. Like, n- no, no, it was, and I, I didn't even finish it. That was the piss off is that I didn't feel like fin- finishing it. It was fun for a bit, but yeah i, I so it is it funny a little bit but that was it i just checked uh walmart just to see if they're still doing that and yeah last of us 2 is 79.96 there which is the price that amazon is because ethan got his on amazon and he said it's 79 bucks and i paid 88 in total for mine well actually 68 because i put 20 bucks down before but oh in total you know mm-hmm. yeah it's gonna be it's going to get super pricey, especially in a time when not that many people have money. And it's going to be really hard to try to try to fix that shit for government like, checks. the general public. Yeah. Got to be spending yeah. that cash. Uh, yeah. Until tax time. And then everybody that's gotten a government check or a handout is going to owe like $8,000. Yeah. That's why I'm saving up a bunch. I think I'm saving like 2000 from uh, anybody the that's been gun. getting. Yeah, anybody that's gotten a handout from the government, do not spend money. Save up as much as you can, because come tax time, there is going to be a day of reckoning. That's that's going to be the like, that's really going to be the shitty time. Like it's, it's shitty funny right on now, social media and... though. What is funny on social just media? Just seeing uh, 
like especially kids my age because for you i'd expect you know people your age range would be a bit more acquainted and kind of understand it but a bunch of people my age are getting those checks and you know buying 200 dollar pair of shoes online they're just spending through that cash and i've been mm-hmm. telling them like listen you have to pay back a lot and they're like oh no it's only like 200 bucks and i'm like they're not giving away 8000 and asking for 200 back no one does that it's not logical yeah. but it's not my problem you know my parents told me they fucking said listen man you better be saving this money because you're going to be owing a lot i learned that's you know not my problem yeah i would i would highly recommend doing what your parents are telling you because yeah it's going to be it's going to be an absolute disaster for a lot of people that didn't also the people that got both like they were getting EI and CERB. So because they acted like a lot of times, maybe it was a glitch or maybe they just didn't fill out the form properly, but those people are really going to get fucked. And my wife works for the federal government and she's been dealing with these claims. Like she's the one that's been getting the call-ins and they've had to adjust every time the prime minister had said stuff. So she's like, I am really scared for next year. She's like, I'm, I'm terrified for all these people that are getting this money. Well, there's a thing, like, a lot of people actually don't know that you can't do it, which is, like, I think I give them a pass, you know, because it's, it's really confusing. For me, I can apply for CERB, which is the workers' comp, or CESB, which is for students. And lots of people were confused, like, oh, well, can I apply for both? And it's not really clearly stated, or it wasn't when it first kind of came out. It is now, which is why I didn't apply for both, because you can't double dip, which, you know, Trudeau mm-hmm. said. But lots of people didn't know that, or are just confused by it and are double dipping and yeah it's going to be i i don't know if you can get fined on it i'm pretty sure you can if like they can you'll just get taxed on it it won't even be it'll be it'll be in the form of a tax when it comes time to it they'll they'll know they know it's gonna be a big fucking tax though like you're gonna be paying a shit ton oh tons yeah i mean it's it's might even be worse than owning your own business like when i was in real estate i think for three years in a row i owed like 10 grand in taxes Mm. And I wasn't even making that amount of money. Yeah. And fuck. like, so they'll get you and they'll find you. Just everybody, please be more uh, responsible with your money. Uh, find, get yourself a side hustle. Get yourself out of that CERB. Try to find a way to leverage the t- the downtime by not spending money. Mm-hmm. Um, because Which should be you, easy if you're staying in your fucking house. It should be, but at the same time, like when you, if you live on your own, let's say, if you're a young person that, like, let's say you're, you, you don't have a home, right? Or you're 18, 19 years old living on your own and you just lost your job. Like, that's what this service is for. And you're using it for, for the bare essentials, right? But there is the other side of it where the people that are taking it, they're not even going back to their jobs because they're maybe making, or they, they, they're getting more money on the, the handout than they were at their job but the scary thing with that is if you st- if you get offered your job back and then if you get offered your job back and you say no then you you, you oh, technically yeah. quit and then you cannot apply for EI after so just be very very careful everybody that's uh, that's with this because yes it's a handout but nothing in this world is free absolutely nothing Mm -hmm. and all of that money that's been given to you it's come from somewhere and they're going to want it back so just just some advice that i hope your uh, elders around you are telling you but if they're not it's like i've had my job i've been lucky to have my job and i'm barely spending money on much this is like my first purchase and maybe six cigars in months okay like we don't do takeout too much uh, we'll only get our groceries. Like I've been saving up as much as I possibly can, and I have my job. So mm-hmm. to that, I can just say, if you're getting the handout, just try to save as much as you possibly can. Well, Thank I start up work again on uh, training is Wednesday. So I'm probably going to, because I reapplied for CERB for the second of just time. I'll probably write it out as I work too, because there's a little portion thing, like, are you working? And I don't think I'll be working enough hours where I can, like not be eligible for it still uh, i think a lot of it while i'm working will be taken back but i just got to be careful with that and make sure i don't double dip because i don't want to get fucked yeah it's it's a very slippery slope for sure and it's one of those things where do your very best to get out of it and i and i like that's just like with any money stuff 
unfortunately, when it comes to schools, even good schools, like what they teach for what you need in real life is such like they don't teach you anything about what you need for real life. Like yeah, unless you have true. somebody around you that knows, like Nick, for instance, knows so much about tax. I learned so much stuff just from him because he went to school and like he's got his accounting degree. So for you, Nick is a valuable, valuable resource for that kind of stuff. You know, uh, when it came to banking, my dad was like super strict when it came to my visas. But hey, like I've never had a single issue with my visas. I've always paid it off out of fear of consequences. And those consequences are legit because I know friends of mine that didn't and they got screwed for years. Yeah, that's the thing. When you buy, when you have a visa, you want to make sure I like I was in a banking class or a personal finance class at Campbell. Because, uh, you know, my business teacher was super into business. She set up a bunch of, you know, there's an entrepreneurship class. Like for me, I took classes like Law 30 and stuff that I'd actually be I'm interested in and apply to real life, which is super nice because now in high school, they're actually teaching stuff like that and not just basic bullshit that you're never going to use. But uh, I got to learn about, you know, personal banking and a good rule uh, whenever I get my visa is she suggested making small purchases like buying coffee or whatever on your visa and just paying it off immediately so I can build up credit and stuff like that. And a lot of people well, just don't I wouldn't, do that and I, just max it out. See, for me, well, A, you shouldn't max it out. I've had a credit card since I was 14 years old. I'm 31 now, and I've never gone more than $1,500 on a single card. And so, But I've never maxed it out. I have, though, taken it to like almost 1000 for instance, you know, on, on expenses. I... I get the whole making small payments and paying it off right away. But, you know, if you just never make a minimum payment, then you'll be fine. Yeah. Because exactly. really, that those little payments there, they might use to get points, and points are great. But for me, what would help me get a super high score on my credit, like, which I didn't even know it was that good, but, like, my, my guy was like, this is crazy for a guy your age, is literally, like, I have my date that I pay off my visa, I pay it off two or three days before that, and I always pay it in full. That's it. It's as simple as that. And you can make small like expenses or whatever, but it's simply the matter of never, ever make a minimum payment if you can avoid it. That's it's not worth that it. That would so be my practical advice. Because yeah. as I learned in personal finance, like minimum payment just screws you over because you pay, like if you, especially if you're a shit uh, interest rate, I don't know. Like, I think it's like 2% mm -hmm. is good or something. I'm not sure if that's right. But like it just screws you over big time. And it's like, so if you owe 500 bucks, but you make minimal payments, you end up paying like 1500 Yeah. And in the long run, you end up losing so much, right? Like, and, and again, you're, you're going to end up getting kind of screwed from the bank because they charge you for all these fees to use certain stuff. But honestly, if your credit is good, they'll do what they ended up doing to me when I was like 24 years old and giving me a line of credit, which has saved my ass. And that's one of those things where if you have a line of credit, it's still debt, but it's not debt that goes against you. And they might even increase it. And then you've got this like this cushion there, you know. So two things is work your way to trying to get a line of credit to where they offer it to you because you'll get a better interest rate. And the other one is the uh, also getting an overdraft on your account. Just, you know, okay. I think most people can get like a $2,000 overdraft just in case you have one of those months and you're going to be below your bank account. Like if you've got 4,000 in your bank account and you need to get something at 5,000, well, you can do that and you've got a $2,000 cushion. That's what that overdraft is mm -hmm. for. Which and you won't get penalized. Useful. You very, it's, it's all, I've only needed it twice, but it's been very, very useful. It's a, it's a huge thing that I recommend people look at. And again, only because it's been super beneficial to me. And I've been lucky enough to not have to worry about like money in that aspect, mm -hmm. you know, obviously everyone's going to have their own money problems and they're going to have, you know, I'm not making enough. It's not, it's, or it's leaving faster than it's coming in, whatever it is. But if you can at least avoid the bank chasing you, then it's really just you against you. Yeah. And that's a much easier battle than you versus the bank. Cause you, you will lose every time. Which most people do whenever they have uh, troubles with the bank or run in run ins with the bank. They're very well, strict and, and they, yeah. they cover their ass like all the time. So it's hard to win against them. Oh, it's, it's terrible. Like and so many people have gotten screwed because of it. And it's like, it's just that, uh, it's just one of those things where it's like, 
all right, like I, I screwed up, but it doesn't mean you have to like take it out on me for the rest of my life and pretty much cripple me financially. And that's a that's a shitty thing. It's like it's a legitimate mafia. Like it's like mortgage. Mortgage is our legit mortgage. Mortgage companies are just legitimate loan sharks. That's yep. it. You know, the, the government it, or the, uh, for us, it's the CRA. That's just a, like, uh, um, what is it? They're just the mafia, but legitimized. That's it. They can come after you for whatever they want. They can make your life a living hell. At least for me, for like at least seven or eight years, they made my life a living hell. Like it's, it's brutal. I've always owed them money. Even when they've given me, like I, I signed up for one grant for like $2,000 somehow, even though they they didn't own up to it, I had to pay $4,000 and I never got anything That's like fucked completely screwed. And it's always my fault, even though it's like, but I have everything here last year. You guys said it was fine, but you guys gave me this grant for 1500 or so. And I have to give you now almost double that. So I don't know. The only thing I can tell people like is what I said before and just just be very, very smart with your stuff. And, you know, the material things, you'll keep, there'll, there'll be more of them to buy. Just try your very hardest to keep your own finances in order so that no banks or no CRAs or no mortgage companies or whatever can screw you because a lot of the times that's what they're out to do most of the time. Well, that's how they, you know, profits. They don't profit if everybody pays off their credit card on time. They profit off those people that can't pay it off on time and then continuously get fucked because they're constantly playing catch up with themselves. Well, and that's pretty much what profit is, is just gaining from somebody else, from something else, right? And unfortunately, the service that they provide, although very helpful for a lot of people, also can really cause them a lot of trouble. Like a lot of trouble. Yeah. Even my line of credit that I have for the money that I've owed on it over the years, if it wasn't in the interest rate that I got it in, which is good, I would have been tanked. Like absolutely tanked. But anyways, that was our dive into what? 10, that was 30 minutes. minutes. Of, That's of crazy. Problem. It did not We're feel like it was that long right of a conversation. There you go. See, and we still got a little bit more to go. Um, yeah, very different, uh, very different vibe. Maybe it's only because it's the two of us. I have no idea, but I hope that some of that advice was beneficial to some of you. And yeah. Well, it should be for most people that are on CERB right now. Especially if you're on CERB. I mean, most of it is just general stuff, but if you're on CERB or EI or anything like that, save the pennies. Don't go spending it because it's going to come back and bite you in the ass. And especially now where everybody's financially insecure, because obviously the world's upside down, it is more important now than ever to be very, very intelligent with your money. Um, okay, let's get into it. The topic is directly from our friend Jesse. Oh, sorry, before we get into that, one more thing. Anthony, I have to apologize. I believe last week when we were talking about the Mario facial hair thing, upon further inspection, I we were pretty much apples and oranges. And so I brought up oranges while you were talking apples. So I apologize for that because my argument did not make sense. Okay. And I had to re-listen to it. And I had Ethan let me know. It's like, he's like, I get where you're coming from. He's like, but I also get where he's coming from. And you guys were talking apples to oranges. So... That being said, I felt I needed to make sure that you were aware that I know. Okay? All good. Just want to make sure because I, I was confused when it happened yeah. too. I'm like, did I did I phrase it like weirdly? <laughs> we we've had this problem. Was it Gardens of the Galaxy last time too? Um, no, I don't remember, but it was something Lion King. I know the Lion King. Mm. That was just a funny Maybe. moment though. That was hilarious. My problem was that Bass didn't even step in as the guy, as the third party not being involved. He could have easily solved it and been like, <laughs> um, you're off. But no, he decided to be a mute and just sit there and let it happen. But luckily, Ethan listened to the whole thing. I listened to it again, that section, because I got confused after. Because literally, we stopped recording and I was like, I don't know if I actually like responded rightly in that one. Like, I think I was right, but for a completely different point that wasn't brought up. So I thought I'd bring it up. Uh, okay, let's get into Jesse's topic. So Jesse's topic was, 
Uh, I was thinking a good topic would be hyped up slash big movies or TV shows or like you mentioned, any type of medium that a lot of people like, but we didn't. And it says I've if got you a guys few. don't use that, that's okay or whatever. So Anthony, <laughs> kick it off. So this is considered my least favorite movie I've ever seen. And it's not to say that it's, you know, the worst movie ever created, but just the one that was super hyped up that I was super excited for. And it just was not good in any sense to me. Maybe it would be if I revisited it. But uh, it was Sausage Party by Seth Green. The animated, you know, movie about food that's, you know, has personalities oh, and they all fucking die. Seth Rogen. Yeah. Seth Rogen. Oh, it's said Green, yes. right? Yeah, sorry, yeah. Seth Rogen. Uh, leading up to this, I was super hyped to watch it. It looked super funny. But watching it with my friend, no word of a lie, he laughed once. And I was straight faced the entire time. I just did not just find so it amusing mad. at all. Like it was just so, it was really stoner humor, and I just you know yeah. didn't relate to it. I just didn't care for it, and I was just so disappointed because I was so excited for it. We went to see it, and it was just such a fucking waste. Luckily, I watched it online though, so I didn't waste any money. But that's important. That is an important factor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. If you want to do like one and one, because I've got a couple more, sure. but I don't want to just kind of list it off. Uh, okay. Well, um, I don't have. I've been kept trying to think of it. And a lot of it is more like which ones were overhyped and stuff. For me, for TV, it was Thirty Rock. I don't know okay. why people like Thirty Rock so much, but I've watched it. I think I started watching it before I started my binging of The Office, and so I was like, "Well, Thirty Rock's newer. I'll give it a shot." I, I've kind of seen some episodes of The, of the Office. And then I got into 30 Rock, I think five, six episodes in, I'm like, ah, uh, not for me. Turned it off. So that's mine. But you know, like, I'm looking at it from Ryan. I've never even seen, I've heard of 30 Rock. I've never actually seen like anything people, about it. People love it. Um, it's super up there. It is award winning. I mean, I think Tina Fey is just fucking hilarious. Like she mm-hmm. is just as a person. She is hilarious. She's super funny. Alec Baldwin, hilarious. The cast, everybody, really good. The cast good. is pretty big, actually. Like got a Un- unbelievable. Yeah, but for some reason, for me, I'm like sitting watching this show. I'm like, I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. Sorry. So uh, my next one, it's so again, a lot of these shows that I don't like or don't overhype. I don't actually. Well, this one specifically, I don't dislike. I just cannot get into it for the love of God. And we've talked about it time and time again. And I just cannot get past the first fucking episode of Breaking Bad. I want to <laughs> like this show so badly, but I fucking cannot. Dude. Oh, man, you got to You got to just fight through it. That's so funny. <laughs> like, this is a show that everybody says is so great. And I'm like, I believe you. But why the it. fuck yeah. can I not watch it? When's the last time you tried? It was like early, like it was just around the start of 2020. Like I think we talked about it on the podcast, and I said, "Okay, let me just try it again." And I just couldn't. Fucking oh, so do it's it. recent. Mm-hmm. I know Nick had the same issue. Nick hasn't been able to get past the first episode, and oh, I think like I've heard that from other people. For me, I just it did like I don't know. Right off the bat, I was like, "I'm in. I'm cool with this. I like it." I don't know why. Don't know why. Maybe That's I'll just pull a How I Met Your Mother and just skip the first fucking episode. And you just could do that. Go back. Yeah, I mean, the first episode is literally like him doing a ride along with his brother in law and then being like, oh, meth. And he runs into Pikmin. And then that's how, like, and he decides that this is what I'm going to do. You know, and it's been out for a while. So whoever hasn't seen it, too bad. Um, but he finds out he has cancer and he needs to find some money. His brother in law tells him, like, that he did a bust on a big thing. Runs into Pinkman, who was sleeping with the mom next door, which was a really funny scene. And then he meets him and says, "Like, do you want to cook?" And then you get onto the next episode. Okay. So, I would, I would, I would jump for sure to the second one. I personally like the first one, but I've heard enough people say that they don't like the the first episode. So, again, for me, no problem there. But I get it. Uh, mine. This is this might be a controversial one for a lot of people because I think it has one of the best performances I've seen. But by two actors, but there will be blood is okay. such an overrated movie, and it's not because it's a bad movie, it's just I don't understand. Like, aside from the fact that 
Daniel Day Lewis and Paul Dano's performances are unbelievable. Like if you want to see performances, unbelievable performance and an unbelievable back and forth between two people. It, it like it's not a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination. But for me, it was like, I don't understand why it's so great. And maybe it's just because of the performances. Like maybe me saying that the performances are unbelievable is the reason why it's so great. And maybe that's the case, because if it was lesser performances, the rest of the movie would be kind of boring. But like the rest of the movie, outside of some key big scenes, like, I don't know. It just, you know, and I love Day-Lewis. I love Paul Thomas Anderson movies. And, I, and I've seen the movie four times because oh, there are fuck. some like, yeah, man, I've I've watched this movie a lot, but it still seems like it's overhyped for me. Not that it's bad. It's just like I'm I'm like overpraised. Again, maybe, yeah. Like, but I don't know. I th- I think for you, it's uh, I would watch it if I were you. Oh, I would definitely recommend it for people to watch because again, some of those performances are unbelievable. Like some of these scenes are just so unbelievable in terms of what Paul Dano and and Daniel Day Lewis were able to pull off against each other like head to head it was crazy was this based on like a true story or anything because it kind of seems like no it was just a story about a prospector like from what i understand i mean if it's if it's based off of something real then fuck i don't know but that's my movie i guess so i guess my movie would be avatar and again i never saw avatar in theaters so I didn't even know as a child growing up that was the first movie with 3D. I think the first movie with 3D I saw was the first Thor, oh, from what okay. I remember at least. But so I never saw it in theaters, which is probably that was a that's likely the big selling point of Avatar for lots of people was that it was the first 3D movie and like the VFX was super good. Still but to this I, day, one of the best theater experiences for sure. When I, mean. I watched Avatar, I had already seen a movie in 3D. I'd already mm-hmm. seen you know a bunch of great superhero movies like the beginning of the MCU with all their great, you know, VFX and all these kind of movies that I've already seen. So I was already like, I was born into just accepting that graphics and movies should look good. Right. So when I saw it, a, I was bored out of my mind watching it, but I was a young kid. So I could have just been, you know, I didn't give a fuck about the characters. There wasn't Batman. There wasn't Spider-Man. I didn't care. But I just didn't get it at all. Like, it just didn't seem that great to me. And mm-hmm. if it is good, like, I'm sure it is, or to some people, but yeah, I don't know. And I do not care about the sequels. Like, I could not give a fuck about, I will watch them <laughs> if they do bring any new, you know, things to it, like 4D. Like, I'll be excited to check it out. But I don't care if it's just going to be another 3D Avatar 2, because I've already seen multiple 3D movies, and 3D is kind of overrated now. Like, it's not that good. Yeah, I think I most of the time, mostly because the 3D that's produced is kind of garbage. Like it's after the fact. Um, but I will say, because I was one of the people that got to see it in theaters in true 3D, that fact that it was uh, filmed on 3D, mm-hmm. right? Not just added 100%. afterwards. It it was something else, man. It was. I still remember being in the theater and watching some of those scenes and like things literally coming off the screen and like having an actual reaction to things like just flying off. I I was, yeah, I was, I was very, very, very impressed. Um, Yeah. Very impressed. But I can see now because I rewatched it with Soph. She liked the movie on its own, but I was just like, yeah, without the, without having experienced it in the theater, it's fine. (laughs) It's fine. It's got a cool premise. I mean, doesn't it kind of like Pocahontas? Yes, it's very, it's got, it's very similar to that. Like it's, I think they said, I think there's been people that have taken the script from Pocahontas and the plot and synopsis of, of what's it called, of Avatar and have been able to make a large, large comparisons to it. So it's like, all right, that's fine. Yeah. So I don't know if I have any big ones up. I don't know if you have a couple other ones. Um, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see if there's a game I can't remember because recently I've been, well, most of the games that I've played, I mean, No Man's Sky was overhyped, but it was mostly because it was a big fat lie. Um, yeah. even though apparently the, um, what's it called? The last ver- iteration of it was very good. Well, basically um, they've updated the game to, you know, be what they said it was going to be when they released it, but it's, you know, too late now, so too little too late right um 
okay i've i've only played skyrim a little bit so i can't say that it's like overrated i never got into it but i didn't get into it but i have played it before uh, i was playing I it at a friend's house same, same page yeah. on that one and, and maybe it's because my love for the witcher 3 runs so deep that like i can't stand to look at another woman the same way mm -hmm. but uh, there was something about skyrim I'm just like okay you know and maybe it's the first person nature of it too because i couldn't get into borderlands and i gave borderlands a good four hours okay so for a but, game and, and, a big chunk yeah and now that's my only concern with uh cyberpunk which for all of you who don't know is delayed till november which makes more sense because it's about the time when the ps5 is going to come out mm -hmm. so there's something there but uh yeah, I can't really think of it. Fortnite, I thought was a little bit overrated. It just wasn't for me. Like, I played it a bunch for a while, but then after, I was just like, I'm over it. Like, I nothing was drawing me too much into it after. But I did play it hardcore for, like, a week. So I yeah. don't know if I can safely say that it was legitimately overrated to me. Um, Which ones? I'm, I'm looking through some video games, like, top video games. I have another video game that isn't necessarily yeah. bad, but it just cannot hold my attention for more than like two days at a time, which is the first Last of Us, because I really want to get oh. into it and I really want to beat it, but I just always get bored and never can. Really? Like even now, oh, I'm still man. on Done It's. It's so good. I'm surprised. What don't you like about it? It's just, I always like, I, on my last playthrough, I got to the same parts. And it's like when we're cr like kind of crouching around in the dark and it's just, I, yeah. I just don't know. I just don't care about like the characters yet, or it's not like uncharted where it has a super good hook and it's super fun. And it's just really interesting to me. It just seems like maybe it's cause the walking dead really tainted my experience with you no know, zombie genre bullshit. And it's kind of like, Oh, uh, it so could be a reason as to why it. I just don't really care anymore. Right. I think the zombies are great in The Last of Us, but yeah, I just, I don't know. There's something about it. Yeah, I don't know what it was for me. I, I Mind you, I'm a naughty dog head. Like, I love the stuff that they do. Love, love, love the Uncharted series. I just finished the fourth one recently. I'm like, yep, I know why I love it. Also, I have came up with a Uncharted 4, a, a new Uncharted game in my mind that I think would be sweet, but I don't want to spoil Uncharted 4 for anybody that might be listening, so I'm not going to say it because I think you need to have played it, but... It has to do with the, it, it just has to do with the Unreal Engine reveal oh, when okay. they showed that that game kind of there. And I'm like, I see a game that's very similar to the game I kind of experienced in a way with a very cool story plot twist or with a very cool story. That's that's where I'm mm -hmm. at. Um, oh, here's one for me, and a lot of people are going to hate me for this. Same kind of reason with the Skyrim and the Borderlands. I thought Fallout 3 was super underrated, or overrated. Couldn't get into it. Lots of people love Fallout. I do not give a shit about it. I do not people find it fun or interesting it. at all. Same with The Sims. Fuck The Sims. I don't. I never understood people's love for The Sims. I think The Sims is just like a form of Animal Crossing. Like It's just a game for very specific kinds of people. Oh, I yeah, for sure. And I mean, it's it's a massive game. Both of them are massive games. And like, I would say they deserve the praise because of how many people love them. If not that many people mm -hmm. love them, I mean, I'm just some I'm just a random jerk off with a microphone that's just saying it. So it really doesn't matter too much. But like, I tried playing Fallout Three, and I've like got a couple hours in. I'm like, eh, I don't think I want to do this anymore. I have, however. This is interesting. I have read an entire breakdown of the games. So yeah. the story is extremely interesting. And I think it was more so from a gameplay standpoint that I just, it wasn't able to grab me, which is it's well, very weird. Or break for like, games. Oh, I, yeah, see, it is and it isn't. I've, I've excused some games mechanics for great story. You know, like even, even when I go back and I'm playing Assassin's Creed 2 um, just for this video, the mechanics of the game, especially now, are so hard to get into because it's very restricted. But damn it, if that story isn't one of the best ones I've seen in games, and like I will, I've played that game almost every second year. I've replayed it, and okay. fuck it, it's good. Even if it is very rigid and a little bit difficult to play at times, I don't care. Love the story, and I will excuse almost any game for its mechanics if there's something in there for me story-wise i'm one of those people well i think it depends like 
personally, for games that are a bit older, like Assassin's Creed 2, and if you played them when it first came out, it's more forgiving because it's like you're really playing for the nostalgia. So you've already you're already used to controls, and like back then, the controls might have, you know, they might have been great for what it was. But like nowadays, we're so accustomed to everything being a so visually appealing, b so you know sound, and the controllers like every input you make is so precise. But if I'm playing a story game and like I don't have any one specific that comes to mind, but if I'm playing a game and the controls just fucking suck, it's just it's not that like it's too big of an investment of me to play, you know, these twenty hour games just for a story I can watch someone else play on YouTube rather than just sit through and try and fucking figure out how to play a shitty game. That's a good point. I can I can respect that, especially if it is like and and I haven't played anything that's too hard to play, but I can definitely like there's ones that it was close. Like if they didn't do if they weren't able to hook me in the time that they did for whatever reason they did, there'd been no way for me to go back to it. So, mm-hmm. I can I can 100% understand that. I'm going through Metacritic right now to see if there's any other games. Oh, Perfect okay. Dark. I've been if no one's played Perfect Dark for the Nintendo 64, it's one of the most underrated games of the N64 era. It's a wonderful, wonderful game. Um, yeah, I can't really think of anything else in terms of TV or games or movies. Like, I, There's obviously some that are like Crash, I thought was super overrated. I'm one of those I, people I tried that... watching... Oh, you can finish your thoughts, sorry. No, no, no. No, I was just going to say is I'm one of those people that dislikes Crash a lot. Okay. And it won an I Oscar. tried watching... Sh- uh, I think it's Shit's Creek on Netflix because I thought it, like, people said it's super funny, and you know it's like a, it's I thought it was a comedy like The Office or something, and it's just a drama. Like I got through the first season and I was just reflecting on it, and I realized like, I'm watching a soap opera right now. Like what the fuck am I doing? Oh no, really? Oh, I love Shit's Creek. <laughs> That's I could, so I funny. Don't know. Like I didn't mind it, but it's also like this isn't what I thought it was. Like, what the fuck am I watching? Like I didn't pick up on it the entire season, but I'm like, this is You thought it was a drama, drama, hey? Well, it seems like the way they ended the first season, like with all the bullshit, it's like this seems like a very big like drama right now. Like not like, you know, how I met your mother kind of drama where it's like mainly a comedy, but you know, it's a dramedy, I'd say. Like this just seems like it's more of a drama interesting yeah i never got that i mean i know there's some like serious beats to it but i don't know i love Shit's creek i thought it was awesome i thought everybody was great david's my favorite and then moira is my second favorite they're mm-hmm. super fucking funny especially well, like, the characters the were good it's too. just i just don't think it was like what i wanted to watch at the time and i realized like maybe i'll finish it because it seems like a short series and i'm already one fifth of the way done and maybe i actually yeah, will quick. enjoy it more like now that i know the mindset of not waiting for know these super funny jokes like from brooklyn 99 or the office and just like okay this is kind of like a more story driven show not kind of just like you know one where they just pump out jokes there's yeah i would say it's just it's a it's more organic where it's less bits that exist and it's more just they're just quirky and funny and they don't connect because they're from different worlds and real fish out of water type of stuff and yeah, I don't know. For me, I gravitated to it right away. It's like it's same with like shows like New Girl, right? I know some people that don't like New Girl. I l- mm-hmm. think it's hilarious. I think it's really good. And I'm trying to think of some other ones now. Right now, I've just been going through video games. Man, this Metacritic list is really wild. Like, is it good games or is it just kind of? It's 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 a bit of it's a mixture of like it's all of them. It's all like the top games oh, yeah. rated by Metacritic. I can't believe Vice City is that low number 83 come on people i never got into sports games i always thought every single sports game it wasn't that it was overrated or underrated just never was for me so i don't know if that's really answering the question in it the kind table, of but. is like people love like there's always like we were talking about it like, everybody's like oh new nba is coming out and it's kind of just like mm. who gives a shit like you know it's great to be excited for it but it's also like it's the exact same thing over and over again nothing is different yeah, I would like. There's lots of stuff like that. That like, where when a game comes to those games, it just I just don't. I don't know. I don't get it. Like, I understand the feeling of being able to do it, but maybe because I've never been able to be very good at them. I imagine if I was really good at them, I'd probably like them more. Maybe like that's first a very good shooters. point. But one more thing I want to add: it's someone Metacritic right yeah. now too. Why the fuck do they have Grand Theft Auto Five in the ninth? 
tenth and eleventh place. I, well, it looks like it's Xbox. Yeah, that doesn't. Um, what difference is it from console to yeah, console? I, dude, I have no idea. They, they, because it's just an aggregate, right? So they just took the aggregate of it's in seventeenth place too. Yeah, it appears, oh, yeah. It's in fucking twenty fourth. What the fuck? It appears oh, yeah. six times in the top thirty. <laughs> Yeah, those lists are super funny. I saw a list on Assassin's Creed, and I'm like, wow, whoever wrote this doesn't really care about Assassin's Creed proper. They just, And they're just looking at it from the game perspective. Because they put Black Flag and Origins. Origins number one, Black Flag number two. And I'm like, um, I don't know about that one, Tim. But that's also because I see it differently. Like, my version is very different than, than another person's version of what... Like, I was actually thinking of doing one of those pieces like a editorial sorts of being like Mm -hmm. what is assassin's creed and then just kind of like breaking off and what's funny about that yeah exactly one of those things and what's ironic about it is that assassin's creed is one of those games or franchises that a lot of people are like it is too it is so overrated because there's been so many of them Mm -hmm. so i don't know i think it's like kind of the same league as cod where it's maybe overrated but it's just so what do you call it uh at least COD, for the most part, didn't do too many different things throughout the years. It seemed like Assassin's Creed was just going off the rails on doing so, changing so many things and then bringing it back and then changing it again and really going with the wind instead of just, I don't know, just just make the game you want to make. Like, just... Well, that was COD's issue. Like, all their fan base was complaining that it's the same game year after year. And then, you know, as soon as they change it, the fan base goes, well, no, we don't want you to change it. Bring it back. And now this year, after like, I'd say six years, they finally brought it back to how it used to be. And people are now once again happy. But Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. game fan bases are really, really dumb sometimes. Super dumb. Oh, I've got one. Here's a movie. It's uh, Interstellar. Didn't really care for it. I thought it was fine. I thought the performances were fine. I thought that one scene where uh, McConaughey comes back and his kids are older and stuff, like that crying scene, I thought that was beautiful, really well done. But there's something about it. I'm like, D- don't care. That's not for me. It's it's uh, it's a little bit overrated. I mean, it's I know it's Christopher Nolan, and I know that he's a bit, he's a he's a film genius, and I love every other thing that he's done so far, except for Dark Knight Rises. But that's another conversation. But for some reason, Interstellar just not for me. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's all I got. I don't got I anything else, Todd. Sweet. Well, I hope we did the question justice. And uh, Jesse, if you're listening to this, um, I don't know. Uh, when you come next week, then definitely, definitely put your list together too, and maybe we can get Vases, and then we'll mm-hmm. just have those two start off the episode by uh, talking about that. But either than that, that is all I have. Uh, Anthony, anything else you want to add before we go? I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah, we talked about all the news at the start with Crash coming out. That was one I forgot about too, but I saw that yesterday. I just saw it like while I was on my phone looking looking at some of the video game stuff. I was just like, oh shit. Um, we talked about Pokemon Snap coming out. I'm actually really excited for that. I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, Skate from EA is oh, actually yeah, Skate official 4. now. They're coming out with a Skate game. Yeah, I'm super excited. Very good. Good timing too, especially with the hype of Tony Hawk. It'll help. And also, which I thought was really sweet, Jamie Foxx is going to be playing Mike Tyson in a biopic. That is unbelievable casting. I think he's going to do so good. And that's exciting to me because Mike Tyson is the only celebrity I've ever met in person and shook his hand. Oh, nice. And Where did you meet him? In Los Angeles. And anybody who doesn't believe me um, can go to my personal Instagram page. It's just G Vandoros, V-A-N-D-O-R-O-S. And one of my photos at the very bottom there, it's me and... My late friend Eli, who he's the one that ended up actually like getting a conversation going with Mike Tyson. This is the, like that's how much of a beauty he was. He was, was not he like a nice guy. He's like, yo, there's oh, Mike Tyson. Was Mike Tyson like a oh Mike chill Tyson? Guy? Yeah. yeah. Super nice. He he was such a nice guy. He was telling us how much he loves Canada. I I think I've said this on the show before, but yeah, super nice guy. Uh, told us how much he loves Canada. Was telling us spots to go. He's like, oh, you guys need to check out this place and this place and this place. I was like, oh, my goodness. And he's got this gorgeous woman waiting off to the side while he's talking to us. Like, come on. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. But, yes, I'm super excited for that. I think that is a um, 
that's going to be pretty awesome. And it's got Oscar written all over it, all all over it. And Jamie Foxx is an unbelievable actor. So that's all I have. No, that's it for me too. I'm just trying to look for this. Mike Alrighty, Tyson well, book. yeah. Um, thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. The last, the longest running members of the F word on an episode before, before we kind of go on our hiatus, which I think is quite proper. It's good that we had one more just on our one on one, so to speak, and we got to talk some money. Yeah. So hopefully, our money or financial advice. Hopefully, good some advice. All that are wanting. Hopefully. I mean, it's very safe advice. It's not going to make you money, but it's definitely not going to cause you to spend a lot of money and maybe hopefully just be more careful. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the F words G. You can email us at the F word podcast at gmail.com. If you have any other topics for next week that you want to let us know, uh, you could find the F word podcast still posting um, facts on the F word podcast on Instagram and lazy Canadian posting memes on Instagram. And that is it. Um, yeah. Three more episodes left. I'm G. I'm Anthony. And we are out. Thank you.